Hello, my name is Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be tracking the Coral Sea developing tropical cyclone threat. We're going to be talking about where it could be impacting. It's not expected to be a significant threat to Australia, but we will still go over the forecast in great detail. Then we're going to be taking a look at the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Kiralee and seeing what impact she'll play on the Australian weather over the next couple of days. And then we'll see one or two hotspots across Australia and see what the weather is going on for those locations. But we will start things off with uh, the developing tropical low, developing tr uh, tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea and if you are brand new to the channel then please do consider subscribing and if you really want to show your support more than most then please do consider leaving a like on the video while you're at it and leave me some feedback in the comment section down below as well. Now taking a look at this developing tropical low you can see it's got a more defined center of circulation from where it had yesterday in fact it's just actually started to blow some convection i.e strong thunderstorms over the top of it and it's been bubbling up this very nice thunderstorm activity for the past uh, couple of um, hours actually in fact over the past maybe 12 hours or so. Um, I did see a little swell displaced about 50 kilometers to the southeast of the center of circulation in the lower levels. Um, and this center of circulation that I've been talking about, this really small swell here where the cursor is, uh, is in the mid levels. Now that means that the centers are slightly displaced from this tropical cyclone. And I know that's meaningless to the average viewer, uh, but what that means is that the system is not very well organized and it's um, very much a, a tilted uh, cyclone in structure or tilted storm in structure which means it's going to struggle to fire organized thunderstorm activity around its center and therefore it's going to struggle to intensify and that's why it's not uh, being forecast to become a strong tropical cyclone in the next couple of days even though it's actually got a much tighter lower level center uh, than I've initially expected this storm to have so I thought that it would actually have ample time to intensify into quite a powerful tropical cyclone whilst I was just taking a look at the storm satellite imagery but it looks like because it's got a very displaced uh, structure to it it's not going to be able to intensify quite fast and it's going to have to organize itself much better which um, for the layman viewer that is a very good sign for Vanuatu and New Caledonia because there's a lot of fuel here for tropical cyclones to get up to some, to some pretty strong intensities and it's also some pretty good news for Queensland because on the very low chance this storm does swing around and head for Queensland it'll be a much weaker system and there are still some model ensembles expecting a direct Queensland landfall in around six or seven days time but the vast majority of them 95% call for Queensland to uh, receive absolutely nothing from this tropical cyclone as it moves through the Coral Sea. So I'm not expecting a Queensland impact whatsoever and it is definitely an all clear sort of situation for Queensland but it's still a very good idea to get a scope of the picture and get a um, good look at what this storm is going to be doing because it will still have an impact on the Queensland weather over the coming couple of days and it will be driving these strong onshore winds especially between locations north of Harvey Bay up towards Cairns and we could be seeing some showers as well along the Queensland coast and it might even drive some thunderstorm activity as well slightly inland you just never know with these systems anyway that's enough rambling about the current uh, look of the storm we're going to take a look at the uh, forecast now we're taking a look at the east and we have forecast winds to start things off you can see it struggles to wrap itself up it's still got that defined low level center um, and that persists uh, basically throughout the storm's lifespan as it moves more into the central uh, regions of the Coral Sea and up towards the Solomon Sea uh, by around next Thursday and Friday we'll start to see the cyclone um, become become a significant system. It's where it's going to intensify into a tropical cyclone, a category one strength system, before it moves towards New Caledonia and Vanuatu. And it's by Friday, I'd be expecting this storm to get named. If it gets named in the South Pacific Basin, it'll pick up the name of Nat. And if it gets named in the Australian Basin or uh, the Australian region of responsibility, which I think cuts off maybe around about here. So it's going to be a very fine line for where this tropical cyclone gets named. It will pick up the next name of Lincoln here. Um, and as we play this through, it blows through north of New Caledonia and then towards Vanuatu and weakens off quite dramatically actually while it gets down there before swinging into New Caledonia by next Tuesday and moving into the very southern reaches of the Coral Sea by around next Wednesday. Now it's a relatively similar forecast to what we had yesterday in terms of track until about Monday. Um, come about Sunday or Monday we we're expecting the storm to be south of Vanuatu in a very similar position to where it was but then for it to continue tracking on towards Fiji quite slowly. So this pretty big swing um, in the forecast models and the direction that this storm is going to be taking but considering it's a category one cyclone and it's going to be a very hard storm to predict um, more than five days out uh, at least it's a very difficult forecast to make and I don't think that it's going to be able to swing back into the Coral Sea that'll be a very oddball track for this storm to make uh, but still it's something that we should be watching out for come around uh, Friday I'll be able to give you a definitive answer regarding whether this system will move back into the Coral Sea but right now all I can say is that it's very unlikely to 
to happen. Uh, but we've got a very good idea on what this storm's going to be doing until about Saturday or Sunday. It will be moving through the Coral Sea and just meandering around and becoming a cyclone by around Friday morning, I would say, before it intensifies slightly more up to maybe Category 2 status briefly, with peak wind gusts probably of around 115 to 120 kilometers an hour, um, especially on the back side of the system. And then it moves north of New Caledonia and between New Caledonia and Vanuatu before stalling briefly. And then the forecast becomes quite uncertain at that time. So yeah, we've got a pretty good idea on what the storm's going to be doing about two or three days ahead of where I expected to have that really good forecast nailed down. So that's quite interesting. And it's uh, good to see that we're um, going to be quite more, a lot more confident with this storm track forecast. It's a shame that we don't get this confidence uh, with Australian uh, tropical cyclone storms that predict, uh, that hit the Australian region rather, I'm really choking on my words now. Uh, it's a shame that we don't get uh, that sort of confidence with those. Now we'll change things up and take a look at the GFS forecast model just to give it a little bit of variety here. It's a similar forecast model to the GFS, it's just slightly uh, lower resolution, which means we don't get the accuracy on the wind speeds and the rainfall as much as we do. Um, I want to say the track with the GFS. The GFS generally underestimates wind speeds by around 30 to 40 percent. Uh, so you could get away with maybe doubling these wind speeds here or maybe adding an extra. If it's 60 kilometers an hour, you could probably add around 30 or 25 kilometers an hour to these wind speeds. So it's definitely a fully fledged cyclone uh, by around Thursday, I would say, just taking a look at this, yeah, it's a cyclone by around Thursday as it moves between New Caledonia and Vanuatu, but it's a little bit weaker than what the Eastern Reef has, and it's also taking a little bit more of a northerly track uh, from what the Eastern Reef model has, but still, it's in a relatively similar neck of the woods uh, compared to what the Eastern Reef has until about Saturday when the track really does start to vary, and by the looks of things, we, see, we start to see this system head towards Australia, but it sort of stalls and then bounces back over. New Caledonia. Now, I think the stalling motion that the GFS has is purely because of uncertainty. These storms are quite a challenge to predict most of the time, um, and the GFS, generally speaking, when the GFS is uncertain on what to uh, predict in terms of the storm track, it throws out this really weird stalling motion. And that's because the GFS uh, model is a combination of about, a, of about 100 ensembles, which are basically smaller forecast models. And uh, let me tell you, these 100 ensembles, beyond about Thursday, you've got ensemble models taken this storm for a Vanuatu landfall over here and you've got them going down towards New Caledonia and you've even got some that are calling for a landfall around Rockhampton and down towards Gympie. So I don't blame the GFS on being a very uncertain pick uh, in terms of track, but still, until about Friday or Saturday, we've got a very good idea on what this system is going to be doing. Now, we'll briefly just take a look at wind accumulation. We won't waste too much more time with the Access G3 model, but you can see the Access is actually calling for a reasonably powerful tropical cyclone to move through between New Caledonia and Vanuatu in a very similar, almost identical track to what the Eastern Reef forecast model has. Uh, so we can say with a very high level of certainty that this uh, forecast that the Eastern Reef initially had that we saw a couple of minutes ago that is most likely the forecast track that this storm is going to be taking and probably it will be quite close to that intensity holding category one status for a couple of days and peaking as a category two maybe briefly as a category three strength severe tropical cyclone but the access has other ideas to this system calling for a peak probably approaching category four status here as it moves south of Vanuatu so it could actually be a very significant tropical cyclone at this point and with the fuel um in the um uh, what part of the world is this in the, I guess, the South Pacific Ocean? The ocean heat content is through the roof and the sea surface temperatures are also very high. So the storm will have ample fuel to intensify and get to quite a strong intensity if it does decide to take this track in the end. And if you've got a really keen eye, you might have been able to notice the access is still backing that system to form in the Gulf of Carpentaria in around 10 days time as well. We're going to get to that in just a couple of minutes. But first, we're going to take a look at ex-tropical cyclone Kiralee. She is still making passage through the, uh, the Australian continent, taking a look at her on satellite imagery, puffing up some pretty significant convection now moving through Tibura, and it's going to be moving north of White Cliffs towards Ivanhoe and Cobar through New central New South Wales across the next couple of hours. She's moving southeast at around 90 kilometers an hour. She's got some really good forward motion on her, and she is also dumping quite a lot of rainfall. You can already see now, even though we're completely out of the radar range, there's a lot of uh, rain already starting to fall on the lee side of this tropical cyclone uh, towards 
towards Griffith and even down towards Wagga Wagga as well. So it's going to be a day filled with rain for parts of southern New South Wales. And some of these showers could also be very heavy and include embedded severe thunderstorms. So we'll be watching out for that as well. Anywhere between the line sort of Cobar down to Parks, Orange, and then to, uh, down towards Wollongong. If you live towards the south of that line, um, down, in, down towards basically the Victoria New South Wales border, expect some pretty significant rainfall totals and also some uh, strong thunderstorms embedded in that rainfall there. Uh, the only exceptions to those locations, probably anywhere between Broken Hill down to Mildura and then towards Griffith and then down towards Albury. Uh, they should be missing out on the worst of the rainfall, but still some isolated showers could be expected there. Now let's take a look at the rainfall forecast for the remainder of today. You can see it will be all on the forward side of the tropical cyclone or the tropical low as she moves through New South Wales. There won't be anything falling on the back side of it. Uh, so once the low pressure system blows through, that's kind of it. And anywhere towards the southern side will be receiving the heaviest of the rainfall, which persists into about Tuesday early morning and then into, oh, I guess early afternoon, actually. That's when the rainfall really does start to ease out. Looks like Sydney might pick up up to around 30 millimetres as well from this. Uh, so it could be a pretty heavy uh, amount of rainfall for Sydney, especially considering it will likely come in around three to... Uh, four hours in terms of this rainfall. So there is still the risk of flash flooding in and around Sydney um, and also in towards central New South Wales as well because there will be locations, especially around Canberra as well, in some of these mountains here, that pick up up to 120 millimetres of rainfall. So there could be certainly some very heavy rainfall totals um, emerging from the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Kirli as she blows through as well. There's also going to be quite a lot of rainfall around Tibura right now. The thunderstorms there are very strong right now and hopefully they do start to weaken off because that amount of rainfall will definitely be causing some significant flooding. Um, we will just briefly take a look at wind speeds. You can see wind speeds actually approaching cyclone status. Uh, winds 61 kilometers an hour. That's only two kilometers an hour away from being classified as a tropical cyclone or a category one strength tropical cyclone here. So this actually has some really strong winds and you can already see 47 millimeters in the past 24 hours for what's that Ballara gas field. Uh, some pretty heavy rainfall also for Birdsville, 25 millimeters and down towards Tabura. They've already had 79 millimetres. They're getting a lot more rainfall uh, from this tropical cyclone as well as she moves through. There'll be rainfall totals approaching 110 millimetres throughout many parts of northern New South Wales from the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Kirli. So she's ended up packing a big punch for parts of southern Queensland and northern New South Wales and her run is not over yet either. Uh, so we'll be watching out for that. But yeah, quite a lot of rainfall already starting to fall for these locations and it's only going to pick up. Now, back up to the northern parts of Australia, we're going to jump up to the Gulf of Carpentaria and see what is in store for, I guess it's around seven or eight days time early next week. Oh, the Eastern Gulf has nothing. I don't think the GFS has anything either, but the access model is the one that we're uh, looking at. Uh, that's the one that's got the tropical low forming by around Saturday, so this coming weekend around Nolanby, and then it's going to move uh, just really erratically before moving towards the Gulf of Carpentaria, and it looks like it intensifies quite significantly there. Um, certainly a plausible forecast in terms of the strength here. There's a lot of fuel up here for this tropical cyclone to come very strong before making landfall on the Cape York Peninsula. It's probably a category two strength tropical cyclone before moving back into the Coral Sea and becoming uh, what looks to be a very strong, significant tropical cyclone at this point here. Maybe a category three strength severe tropical cyclone with peak wind gusts. Probably going to be approaching 170 kilometers an hour. Yeah, about 170 kilometers an hour here um, as it moves into the Coral Sea past Thursday Island and Weeper. Very, very strong indeed. Uh, that's some significant wind gusts that we'll be looking at. Now, this is not the first time that the Access G3 model has thrown up a very small but powerful tropical cyclone around the seven or eight day mark this tropical cyclone season. It's pretty frequent for the Access to predict stuff like this and for it never to materialize. So I'm not in the least bit concerned about this tropical low uh, right now. It's not even a designated, uh, des uh, designated tropical low, mind you, at this point. So it is a very uncertain forecast and I don't think the Access is right in saying that there's going to be a strong tropical cyclone up in this part of um, Australia, so i.e. not a plausible forecast, but it will be something that we continue to be watching, and considering it's the second day in a row that the Access G3 model has had this uh, on its forecast, then I mean it's definitely something that's got my head, and I will be looking at it uh, over the next coming days, and if you want to see coverage on this and also all of the systems here, including the Coral Sea one, then please do consider subscribing because it really does help out the channel, and you also get post notifications with that as well uh, to be notified when I upload. Now, um, the 
the only other thing that I kind of want to talk about in this video as well is I guess the heat that's going to be materializing over Western Australia. It's definitely going to be a hot week down towards Perth as well. We've had a beautiful night overnight, got down to 14 where I'm uh, located and it was a very pleasant morning to wake up to. Uh, but you can see it looks like by around next uh, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to start to see this heat really extend down the coast. We'll be seeing some temperatures approach 40 or 41 degrees Celsius. I believe Friday is going to be the hot day with up to 43 degrees uh, expected for Perth. Oh, that's not heat, that's humidity. Uh, yeah, but it will be this very hot, dry heat, 43 uh, degrees of the northern suburbs around Ellenbrook and Bullsbrook. Uh, so yeah, definitely could be quite warm indeed. And this heat extends right down towards what looks to be Margaret River, 40 down there. That's going to be pushing records uh, for February. It's going to be a very, very hot one, that's for sure. Um, probably not classifiable as a heat wave because it's only a three day skin to this hot weather before it really starts to ease off. Maybe up towards the north, you're going to be looking at temperatures approaching 47 around Calbarry. That could be classified as a heat wave, but it's just going to be this really hot summer spell that we see. And hopefully by around early next week, we start to see this heat ease off, which is what looks to be on the forecast. It moves a little bit further north and a little bit further inland. But yeah, uh, very, very warm indeed. Oh, <laughs> mind you, looks like next Wednesday it warms up again, 46 degrees for Bulls that's very very hot indeed hopefully we get a little bit of a sea breeze because that is going to be brutal for Perth 46 um, but yeah looking long range there it looks like all of Western Australia is going to be under this really hot spell there will also be some pretty significant heat today and into tomorrow as well for New South Wales that I forgot to mention uh, on the lee side of ex-tropical cyclone Curly as she moves through it could get quite warm indeed um, for some locations especially down towards Sydney as well uh, the heat indexes could be very very high and we could be seeing some feels like temperatures probably approaching 32 or 33 degrees Celsius over night uh, as a minimum temperature so very warm indeed anyway starting to ramble here thank you so much for watching this video it's been uh, great presenting the weather on ex-tropical cycling curly as she wraps herself up now and we're also going to be tracking this system very closely in the coral sea because it's looking better and better by the minute um yeah, we'll be watching this develop over the coming couple of days and if you wish to receive coverage on all things weather around australia and new zealand then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it but that's all for me and i'll catch you on the next storm goodbye